So hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Glenn the Hen and in today's video we're looking at these Chinese banknotes issued by if I pick it up, the Bank of China. So the Bank of China was initiated in 1905 under the Qin Dynasty uh, in the Empire of China and it does still function today so the Bank of China does issue banknotes in Hong Kong and Macau, but it doesn't issue banknotes in China itself. The period in which it did issue banknotes was between 1912, which was the first issue, and 1942, which was the last. And I would say, I can't find any information on why they first issued banknotes. Um, or why they stopped issuing banknotes. Okay, and it says, Wikipedia says, from the establishment until 1942, it issued banknotes on behalf of the government along with the big four banks of the period, the Farmers Bank of China, Bank of Communications, the Central Bank of China. So, it pretty much acted like what the banks in Hong Kong issued. They would have had to back these with uh, probably gold and silver. But anyway, let's not worry about that. So the Bank of China usually depicts the Bank of China building that's in Shanghai. And this is on the 5 yuan banknote. This series also had the 1 yuan as well as the 10 yuan, which I do have that banknote. Uh, but the one you one seems to be a little bit harder to get. So these banknotes are pretty readily, readily available. And they cost between $5 and $10. So they're one of the easiest banknotes to get from China. And we have a pagoda as a watermark. And on the front of all these banknotes is Sun Yat-sen, which is a, who was the first president of China. And these have a dating system of 26 which if you put on 11 is uh, 1937 which you get here so if you want to know the date of these banknotes in Chinese years you just put on 11 so you have 26 and you also need to read it that way so you've got Republic of China the date and then uh, and the year so it's a nice banknote and you can get these in single prefix as well. Then we have the 10 yuan. So these are about $5, $10 each. And I've got two of them because I've got double letter prefix and single letter prefix. And a lot of websites don't distinguish that. Uh, more than likely is that the single letter was printed first and then they need more of the banknote. So then they just would have done double lettering. So you won't issue the same banknote, the same serial number twice. People might think would be a counterfeit. And this also has Sun Yat Sen, has a pagoda, and on the back it has the Bank of China building. You can see these are printed by Thomas de la Rue in London. So at the time, um, a lot of the banknotes were printed in Europe and the United States. Because of the chaos in China, uh, a lot of the banknotes were not printed. And even the Chinese banknotes at the time were substandard. So that is a nice series of oh, that one. And the other common series is, so let's have a look. This one says 29. So what would that be? 29 plus 11 is 40. There you go. So this is a 5 year one from 1940. So 1940 was, uh, some of them are common. Uh, this also comes in a 10 and 20 cent, which is a bit harder to get. And also comes in 25 and 51, which is also pretty hard to get. What I have here is the 5, 10 and the 100 yuan. 100 yuan is a, a, also one of the hardest series to get. Uh, that's why mine's in low grade. But the 10, 5 yuan comes in to different styles so here we have a letter as a suffix here we have no letter as a suffix and this one has six numerals and six numerals as well 
So this one would have been the second issue. And it has a pagoda. So this is, uh, I think it's the Temple of Heaven. Probably in Beijing. Probably in the um, Forbidden Palace, which used to be the former palace of the Emperor. It has Sun Yat-sen. These ones are printed in the United States. So they have no watermark. That's another distinguishing feature of America. Okay. It's, uh, they didn't issue watermarks. They only started that in 96. So the Americans are a bit backwards in their currency banknote printing. So, and then you've got colored dots. So that's a security feature. Then we have the 10 one. So this one's a little bit buggered. Probably in a, a fine condition. And I've got two of them. So the difference here, the serial number's the same. But if we turn over on the back, we have one with the serial number on the back, and you have one without the serial number on the back. And you can get, uh, I think, the varieties. Okay, if we look at um, Numistar, uh, that's the only two varieties that you can find. So, but usually the ones with the serial number on the back are more common. And also in a lot better condition. So this one's probably a EF condition, I would say. It does have folding. It doesn't have a fold, but it has like creasing. So that's probably a bulk one. It was never issued for circulation. And this one definitely saw a lot of circulation. So by the time the communists took over, these banknotes would have pretty much been out of circulation because inflation took away the value. And the communists, they did issue a, the lowest value is one yuan, uh, but that didn't last long. So the highest bank that I have is the 100 yuan. And you get two versions. So this version has two inscriptions here, Chongqing and on the earlier versions, you that is missing. So this was put on in the later versions, and also the later versions do have serial numbers in the back. So this one is, I would say, in the middle version, because uh, the later version had the serial numbers in the back, and this was printed by America Banknote Company. So there's a uh, Chung King as well in English. So they put it in Chinese and English, and that is. Very interesting. Why would they need to put the place down where it was issued? Ah, well, sometimes, like the Indian banknotes issued by British India, especially the high value, 1,000 to 10,000 rupees, had the place of issue on the banknotes. So this one would have been a lot of money. Being the highest valued banknote issued so far, uh, a lot of people probably would not have... Uh, seen this denomination in circulation up until uh, the mid to late part of the uh, 1940s when inflation pretty much won rampant but there is a, a 1941 issue that should be more common than this but it's not and a 1942 would they issued a 500 1000 yuan banknote so inflation do you have an impact? But these banknotes are quite nice. So this one is probably going to cost oh, between ten and twenty dollars just for this banknote, and we'll have a look and see how much they cost on eBay. So here I have some Bank of China banknotes, and the lowest value one that we've got is twenty cent. So I should have actually bid on that. That would have been a good banknote because it's not a easy banknote to get. I uh, only went for $2, so obviously a lot, of, a lot of people don't know about this. Then you got 1936, 5 yuan, $2.50. Uh, don't worry about these ones, these are issued by Communist China. And then you got 1935, so you get a lot of them, $5. Central Bank of China, uh, that's a difference. So the Central Bank is not the Bank of China. Yeah, it's, it's the Central Bank, but... Uh, what about the other ones? Are they Central Bank? Oh, it's a Central Reserve Bank, so it's different. So 
So Bank of China, Bank of Communications. Okay, here we have one six dollars Bank of China nine forty, and same here five dollars. And here's another one eight dollars. Yeah, so between five and ten dollars. And then we have a nine forty eight dollars. So these ones are easy to get. So I haven't come across a one hundred one yen yet. So you can see uh, the algorithm on. This one's actually good, 1914, pretty hard to get. And so you can get two of these, five and ten yuan, 1937. Uh, for $13, and I haven't seen a one yuan yet. So, yeah, so that's it that's been sold. So if we look at banknotes that are for sale, you know, $8.50, or five yuan, another five. That's a central bank, it's not the one we're looking at. So the, anyway, the algorithm is not distinguishing between Central Bank of China and just Bank of China. So it's a bit hard. 20 customers unit, that's a good price for that. So you got nine, twelve dollars for a five yuan. A five yuan, Bank of China. And that is the Central Bank of China. Uh, Bank of China, should I say? Let me have a look at my bank. Yeah, Bank of China. Sorry, I confused myself. And that's a 10 year one. Oh, no, five. It has to be a different date. Or maybe. See, I, I just confused myself. They're both the same banknote, but the, because of the way the person has taken the photo, this one's purple, that one looks blue, so it looks like a different issue. Okay, so then we've got other one. So Central Bank of China is a lot more common than Bank of China. Uh, Fifteen dollars. And I don't see a one or just five and ten are mainly that I see from the Bank of China. Which means that the one you one is most likely a very scarce banknote. And the one hundred is also gonna be hard to get. Uh, but, you know, you just keep on looking because, you know, at different times people put on different banknotes for sale. You can see you've got a whole lot of different ranges. That one is a good one. I know that one's pretty scarce. And anyway, so there's just lots of different banknotes to get from. China, lots of uh, different issues. They usually change them every five or ten years uh, because of inflation and also counterfeiting. So you could actually get a fake one. So this 100 yuan is a bit harder to get. So anyway, I hope this helps you with our uh, Chinese banknotes. This is just the first series. As soon as I get other banknotes from the other banks, I'll make a video. Thank you very much and have an awesome banknote collecting time. Thank you and goodbye.